Hi, this is Ross Randall with the Lamar County School District. I wanted to take a minute and walk you through the returning student registration application process. A lot of you have already done this. You did it. We, it's the same system we've used in the past. So most of you are very familiar with it. There's a few things that uh, are new, uh, like uploading documents. I'm going to go over that with you. Uh, but if you'll follow along with me, I think you'll get all of your questions answered as you go through the process. So to start off, we go to the main page and click on the Active Parent account. You will log into Active Parent. If you do not remember your username for Active Parent, you will need to contact the school. They will be able to provide that for you. If you know your username but I forgot your password, then you can simply select Forgot Password here on the screen and put in your username and you will receive an email at the email address that you use to register when you set up your account. The usernames are case sensitive, so be sure to uh, check that to make sure that, um, that you are using the correct case. Most of the accounts that are set up are going to be all uppercase. And then you put in your password and you're going to log in. Once you log in, you will click the paper pencil icon in the top right corner to start the returning student registration process. You'll select your student. Some of you may have more than one student. We're going to do one at a time. This account has one student and I'm going to select returning student registration. Student registration is the registration type. Be sure to read all the information throughout the registration process. A lot of that is new due to some of the COVID uh, issues. We've got some information there that you need to read, but you'll select begin registration. Almost all of the information in the returning student is going to be pre-populated and most of it you're not going to be able to edit like on the demographics information. If any of this information is incorrect, please contact your school and, and make sure to tell them to change it. You can continue with this registration process, but be, be sure to go back later and let the school know if any of this information was incorrect. The registration has nine steps. Most of them will go uh, pretty fast because most of the information is pre-populated for returning students. The first thing that is different is the parent guardian choice, which is where you will let us know if you're going to be sending your student to school for a traditional class or if you're going to be keeping your child home for the virtual classes. Be sure to read this statement here as this explains your responsibilities if you do decide to keep your student home. Everyone has to agree to this statement here in this section down here. So we're going to let, you're going to let us know if, if you're going to be keeping them home or sending them to the traditional classes, and you're going to select I acknowledge and agree. The next step is you're going to be your residency proofs. Normally, you would bring those residency proofs to the school and the school will make copies of them. And, and that's when you would complete your registration. Due to COVID restrictions, we're requiring everyone to upload those documents. So in this section here, you're going to verify that the address has not changed for the student's uh, address. If it has, then you can add a new address and then delete the one that was not correct. You can also uh, add phone numbers. And if this phone number is incorrect, you'll add a new number and then you'll delete the one that is incorrect. Residency document upload is where you'll send your residency documents. Be sure to read through this very carefully to make sure you're sending the correct documents. If you have any questions on this, please contact your school and they can walk you through it. Everybody will be uploading a minimum of two documents. And so we're going to click on residency documents and then you just click on upload new file and you can capture your documents in, in, in any way that, that you have the capability to do. You, if you have a scanner, you can scan them. If you have a phone, then you can simply just take a picture of the document and use that photo as the upload file. Make sure if you take pictures of them and or if you scan them, that the image that you're sending us is legible and that we can see all the information on there. So you're going to simply select a file, you'll select the file, and then you'll name the file and then you'll upload it. And do each document that same way, one at a time. And once you have that complete, then you go to the next step. 
This is the uh, birth and early childhood section. All of this should be already filled out for you. If any of this information again is incorrect, please contact the school. The next step is the immunization and medical. We have a form that the nurses usually collect information on during on-site registration. Since we can't do that this year, the, the nurses are asking that everyone complete this form and upload it. If you do not have the capability to do this, you will be asked to provide this when school starts. But if you can, please click on this link. It's gonna open up in a new window or a new tab. Print this form out, fill it out, and either capture it with your phone or scan it back in and then come back to the tab or page where the registration is and you're going to upload that in the medical documents field. If you are an incoming seventh grader, uh, then you will be required to upload your Tdap vaccination form. A Tdap vaccination is required for all seventh incoming seventh graders. Please upload that immunization document here. If you don't provide it, you will, the application will be returned to you and asking you to uh, upload that form. And then you'll uh, select whether or not we can provide medical treatment if no contacts can be reached or medical transport if no, if no emergency contacts can be reached. The next session, section is the permissions. There are two things here that you need to be aware of that are new. Uh, this is standard information we ask every year. Just select yes or no to any of those permissions. The, the next one down here is the student handbook agreement. We're asking everyone to click on this link here to open up a new window or tab and to view the handbook. Please uh, read through this handbook. It's a lot of information. So go through it. Make sure you understand everything. When you're finished, come back to the registration window and then select I have read the student handbook and agree to the policies and procedures. The second one is a parent, guardian, consent, and release for video audio conferencing. This is in the event we have to shut schools down like we did in the spring, and we have to revert to uh, virtual classes for uh, online learning. Uh, this also would be used uh, as a permission if you elect to keep your child home for virtual classes. Please click on this link, read through this information, make sure you understand it, come back to the registration window, and then select I agree and consent to the parent guardian consent release form. Once you do that, you click next steps. This is your uh, contacts list. So you may have several in here. Please go through each contact and uh, update any relevant information that needs updating. If there's a contact in there that no longer needs to be in there, please delete that contact. You can delete a contact by clicking delete and you can edit a contact by clicking edit. Please make sure that an email address and a phone number is in every contact that you mark resides with or an emergency contact. Uh, if, if, for, if you do not see an email address or a phone number in, any, in, in, in those particular contacts, please click edit and add that in there. Once you have all of your contacts updated and added and deleted, click next. Here, you're gonna just select if school's dismissed early, what do we need to do? So you're gonna click the next step. This is a quick little survey about internet access at your home. Please select whether or not you have internet access at home. If you have internet access at home, access at home please let me know what type it is. If you do not have internet access at home, please uh, let me know why you do not, whether it's uh, no providers in your area or there's providers, but it's just too expensive. And the last one is if you do not have internet, how far do you have to drive to get access to the internet, whether it's driving to the school, to the uh, local library, or to a friend's house? Put that in there and let me know. The next step is finishing it up. So this section here has a link to the free and reduced lunch application that's online. Uh, we do ask that you uh, click on this link to open that window up so that you can go back after you finish registration and complete this application. Just click on it, it's gonna open in a new tab. Navigate back to the registration so we can finish it up. I'm gonna click I confirm and I'm gonna enter my name. And then I'm gonna select save and finish. If there's anything that you missed that was required in the application process, it's gonna take you back to that section and let you know that you missed it. 
I missed a lot of stuff because I didn't fill everything out. So I did not upload my residency proofs here and it's going to let me know that. So if you get if you get anything like this, just read what it tells you to do and make sure that you get everything that's required completed. Once you have everything finished and you get to this point, click save and finish. You'll get a notification up here at the top that says your registration is complete. And at that point, go back and complete the lunch application if you need to. And you are all done. Thank you so much.